Okay, so uh, I'm about to start the next lecture about quantum groups. Uh, so let. Uh, so you, you, well, I mean, we want to get to quantum affine algebras, Youngians, and Q characters. That's basically the goal. So uh, so today, uh, so I want to start with uh, what we uh, discussed uh, at the end yesterday, and uh, so this is. Uh, um, uh, Lie algebras and Poisson Lie groups. So uh, we talked about the fact that if you have a Lie group or algebraic group or a formal group G, let me just call it a Lie group, uh, and uh, then, uh, then uh, G is Poisson if uh, it is equipped with Poisson bracket. on smooth functions such that the map G cross G to G multiplication map is a Poisson map. Where the product G cross G is equipped with Poisson structure in a standard way. Uh, and uh, well, because uh, so, uh, so if you have a Poisson manifold, you can determine Poisson bracket by Poisson by vector. So Poisson bracket of FG is uh, uh, multiplication of pi uh, times f tensor g, where pi is a Poisson by vector. So it's a section over g of uh, wedge 2 of the tangent bundle. Uh, and so, uh, but uh, because we have a Lie group, its tangent bundle is trivial. And in fact, there is a um, canonical way to trivialize it. In fact, there are two canonical ways to trivialize it, by left translations and by right translations. So let's use right translations. So we trivialize the tangent bundle of G by right translations. And this allows us to, uh, 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 we can view this Poisson by vector as a function section of the trivial bundle. Let me call it pi capital from G to wedge two of the tangent space at the identity, which is the Lie algebra. Uh, well, uh, yeah, so we can say, uh, so but when I write pi uh, uh, f uh, tensor g, then uh, maybe I should write uh, more explicitly. Uh, it is uh, df tensor with dg inner product with pi. Uh, OK, so we can consider it as a function. And uh, then uh, the fact that it is, uh, uh, so pi is a Poisson Lie structure. OK, so the fact that it's a Poisson uh, b uh, bracket means that quote and bracket of pi with itself must be 0. But also Poisson Lie structure gives uh, this uh, co-cycle uh, equation, which uh, reads uh, uh, pi of xy equals to pi of x plus x pi of y x inverse, where this is the adjoint action of x on pi of y. Uh, so uh, and uh, then uh, what this implies is that, uh, well, uh, so in particular, uh, this means that pi of 1 equals 0. So uh, the Poisson structure is completely degenerate at the, at the uh, unit. And whenever you have a Poisson manifold where the Poisson structure is 0 at some point, uh, you get a Lie algebra structure on the tangent space given by the differential of pi. So the differential of pi, uh, uh, on the you, you, you get a Poisson structure on the dual tangent space. 
And so the differential of pi is a map uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, g to wedge 2 of g. Uh, and uh, this is exactly this uh, delta, which is the core bracket. Uh, so, and uh, you can show that this is a Lie by algebra. So, so g was delta is a Lie by algebra. Yes. You say it again. No, th this is automatic. You can show that uh, if it satisfies for multiplication, then inversion is going to be an anti-Poisson map. So it changes the Poisson bracket. Uh, and so this is a Lie by algebra, so which means that uh, delta is a Lie core bracket. So which means uh, delta dual from wedge uh, 2 of g dual to g dual is a Lie bracket. And also delta is a one core cycle of G with coefficients in wedge two of G. So, and um, well, there is a theorem of Drinfield, which is a Poisson enhancement of uh, the third theorem of Lee. Uh, and uh, it says that the, ma the functor uh, G sends to Lie algebra of G is an equivalence of categories between uh, the category of po simply connected Poisson Lie groups question groups uh, and category of uh, finite dimensional Lie by algebras. Uh, and uh, this can be done for real groups or complex groups. But only, uh, but, but only for the analytic setting. So, so what it says that, uh, uh, and it's also f true for formal groups. So what it says that you can integrate, uh, that you can invert this functor, so you can integrate uh, any uh, Lie by algebra structure to a Poisson uh, bracket on the group. And in fact, it is, uh, if you know the third theorem of Lie, which says that this is true for ordinary Lie groups and Lie algebras, uh, then uh, it is easy to prove this theorem because uh, you can, in integration uh, corresponds to solving some simple differential equation, which is not difficult to solve, and you can uh, really integrate any Lie by algebra structure. Uh, so, Finite dimensional. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Right, in the analytic setup. So in the algebraic setup, uh, you can't really inter integrate any bracket. Similarly to third theorem of Lie doesn't really work in for algebraic groups. But uh, you, but uh, 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 but in the formal and r real or complex analytic setting, it works. And. Uh, uh, so I want to uh, recall uh, the notion of quasi-triangular Levi algebra. And so this was when uh, uh, our uh, co-bracket was given by commutator uh, with some uh, element R of uh, G tensor G. So this means that this, three cos, uh, this uh, one cos cycle is a co-boundary. Uh, uh, and uh, well, I mean, uh, and, and uh, so in this case, automatically, because this is Q-symmetric, you have that R plus R21, which is T, is G invariant. Uh, I'm not sure there are good pens, so let's see. So this R plus R to 1, which is T, is G invariant. So in particular, instead of R, we could use the skew-symmetric part of R. And it would be the differential of the skew-symmetric part of R in the standard complex of G with coefficients in wedge 2 of G. Uh, 
And, uh, uh, and then uh, R is also should satisfy the classical Young-Baxter equation. So R solves classical Young-Baxter equation, R12, R13, plus R12, R23, plus uh, R13, R23 equals to zero. Uh, let's see if do you think this pen is better. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and in this case, uh, if, if uh, delta is a co-boundary, which is called co-boundary Lie algebra, it's so slightly more general than this, then actually there is a very simple formula for integration of the uh, Lie algebra structure to the Poisson bracket. You don't need to solve anything. There is a very simple formula uh, which says that the uh, Poisson bivector uh, uh, pi is uh, just the difference of, uh, let's say, left uh, translation of uh, R minus the right translation of R. So if you have any uh, element of uh, uh, G tensor G, then you can uh, 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 make it a section of the uh, tensor square of the tangent bundle in two different ways. You can left translate it and you can right translate it. And uh, the Poisson by vector turns out to be the difference. Separately, these things are not skew symmetric. But the difference is because uh, if you take the symmetric part, it is G invariant, and therefore its right and left translations coincide. Uh, so, uh, so this means that these quasi-triangular uh, Lie algebras are especially nice, uh, and there are many other reasons why. Well, for example, uh, mm, there is a nice construction of them. So uh, there is a, a, a source of uh, quasi triangle so, so in general, this notion of Lie algebra is kind of, if I ask you to construct examples, it is kind of complicated because how do you put a bracket on the dual space so that they are consistent in this way? But actually, there is a simple construction, which is called Manin triple, which is ex equivalent to uh, the notion of uh, Drinfeld's uh, double of a Lie algebra which allows you to construct it from uh, much more classical uh, objects. So what is a Manin triple? Uh, so let's, uh, let me talk about the finite dimensional case first. So it's a triple of Lie algebras. Uh, so actu actually, I don't need to assume uh, uh, finite dimensional. So, so, so we'll call it G, G plus, G minus. Uh, such that uh, g equals to the direct sum, g plus plus g minus as a vector space. Uh, and uh, uh, we're supposed to have a, 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 a non-degenerate uh, uh, invariant inner product, so which means symmetric by linear form. Uh, on uh, G, uh, uh, mm, such that uh, G plus and G minus are isotropic. Well, let, let me assume first that G is finite dimensional. And then I will actually apply it in the infinite dimensional case. It also gives uh, uh, Lie algebras if uh, you're careful enough. Uh, so in particular, this means that they are Lagrangian. Because they uh, add up to the whole G. Uh, so in this case, uh, uh, so given a Manin triple, you can construct a uh, Lie by algebra uh, uh, in a very simple way, namely you uh, G plus turns out to be a Lie algebra, and G minus is a dual Lie algebra. So I think I mentioned maybe that axioms of Lie algebra, similar to axioms of Hopf algebra, are self-dual. So the dual of a finite dimensional Lie algebra is also a Lie algebra, where the bracket and co-bracket get exchanged. Or rather, bracket is exchanged with the dual of the co-bracket and vice versa. 
So, uh, so if you have g, g plus, g minus, a minor triple, Uh, then, uh, uh, since you have this situation when you have a bilinear form and these are isotropic and they add, add up to G, uh, then you have uh, 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 an isomorphism of uh, vector spaces from uh, G plus to uh, G minus dual. And, and this gives uh, G plus a Lie algebra structure. Well, because G plus dual is G minus, which is a Lie algebra. And uh, uh, and the uh, proposition is that they are compatible. So more precisely, if you have any non-degenerate inner product, uh, which uh, 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 for which uh, g pl plus and g minus uh, are uh, uh, isotropic and add up to the whole g, uh, then you can define uh, this. Uh, Lie algebra structure, but for them to be compatible, you need to use the invariance of this inner product with respect to the G action. Lagrangian what? Lagrangians you used also for symmetric forms, I, uh, for hyperbolic symmetric forms. Yes, I think so. Uh -huh, what would you say? Maximal isotropic? Okay, so uh, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll we'll discuss. So you add if it's all dimensional, you you, you add the one-dimensional space with a commutative bracket, and then it becomes possible. And that's exactly how you construct it. So uh, so the, they are compatible, and also you can go back. So you can go back. And this is called the Drinfeld double of Lie by algebra. Uh, uh, namely, if you have uh, Lie by algebra G plus, uh, then uh, you can uh, define uh, G minus to be G plus dual. So that's another Lie by algebra. And then you t take G, which is G plus plus uh, G minus. And uh, uh, then you can show that there exists a unique. Uh, so in the, in the form is just the standard pairing. So uh, it's a symmetric form that pairs G plus and G minus. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then there exists a unique uh, bracket on G, which extends uh, on G plus and G minus. And then it, when it extends, we have to say how to commute G plus and G minus. And you can uniquely extend it so that this form is invariant. And this is really the classical uh, analog of the quantum double construction. So if you uh, take a qu quantum universal enveloping algebra and takes its quantum double and then take classical limit, you will obtain this. By the way, I should say that G is uh, not just a Lie algebra, but G is a Lie by algebra. So it has its own Lie algebra structure, which is delta G equals to delta G plus minus delta G minus. So the, and this corresponds, remember, when we constructed quantum double, we took Hopf algebra H and tensor it with H dual with the opposite coproduct. And this minus signs corresponding to the fact that we took opposite coproduct. Uh, so, uh, Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. G itself is a Lie by algebra. 
Well, so, so the corresponding group, there is, uh, I mean, there is no uh, simple uh, description of it. It's just uh, you have to exponentiate it in the usual way. And, uh, it's not easy to get G without using the Lie algebra yet. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, what, else, what was I going to say? Uh, Yes? If we apply uh, the double construction to G, so this is uh, G uh, den is denoted by double of G plus, and if you take uh, the double of G, uh, you can just show this as G plus G, but uh, uh, this is with delta and this is with minus delta. Uh, and also, I should say that uh, there exists a unique bracket, but you can actually compute it. So this bracket, if you take A plus with B minus, where this is in G plus, and this is in G minus, then this is equal to the coadjoint action of uh, A plus acting on B minus, uh, minus the coadjoint action of B minus acting on A plus. I may have uh, confused the overall sign, but up to an overall sign, that's what it is. Question? No, this is a, uh, there exists a unique bracket of G extending the bracket on G plus and G minus. So we know how to commute two elements from G plus, and we also know how to commute two elements of G minus. But then we have to say how to commute an element of G plus with an element of G minus. And this is, uh, is given by this formula. It has two, comp so when you commute an element of G plus with an element of G minus, you get two, two parts. One lies in G minus, and this is this one, and the other lies in G plus, and this is this one. Okay. Yeah, because I have to put uh, a Lie bracket. So, so G, mi G minus is defined to be G plus dual. And it also should have a Lie bracket. Because I, I, I'm saying that I'm extending the Lie bracket. I'm constructing a Lie bracket on G when I already have a bracket on G plus and G minus. So G minus should have a bracket. But it's a dual space of G plus, so for that purpose, G plus should have a co bracket, and that's where I use it. Yes, it is a bi algebra. Yes, exactly. That's what I was going to say. So, uh, and the, since the quantum double was canonically quasi triangular, the proposition is that uh, D of uh, G plus is quasi triangular. And this is a bijection. Uh, uh, with R matrix, uh, uh, just given by the sum of AI tensored with AI dual, uh, where from I, uh, uh, where AI is a basis of G plus, and AI dual is a basis of G minus. So in complete analogy with the quantum case. So uh, this is really simpler, but since we started with tensor categories, we did the quantum case first. And uh, so this is completely analogous and is a quasi-classical limit of this quantum things that we discussed. So now uh, let me do examples. So, uh, so mining triples really uh, occur in nature, n uh, naturally. And so, uh, for example, uh, uh, well, we take G, uh, which is a simple E algebra. Uh, well, that, then it has two subalgebras, B plus and B minus, uh, in G. And uh, they almost form a Mannion triple, uh, except that uh, there is an issue. First of all, they intersect with each other. The intersection is the Cartan. And the other uh, problem is that they, uh, uh, 
are not quite isotropic because they're too big. They're bigger than half of the dimension. And in fact, the dimension might be odd, as uh, 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 Rostislav pointed out. So, uh, so what you need to do is uh, let's define G tilde to be just G plus H, where H is the Cartan subalgebra. Uh, and then uh, we have B plus tilde. Uh, and, and, and the form is going to be uh, the form uh, of G, let's say the killing form, minus the restriction of that form to H. And, uh, and then we have uh, this uh, B plus tilde and B minus tilde are uh, mm, uh, Borel subalgebras of G tilde. Uh, so, uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, so you uh, uh, so you take uh, so this is just n plus, and you add to it, let's say, x comma x, uh, where x is in h, and uh, n minus and b, b minus tilde is uh, uh, n minus plus plus x comma minus x where x is in h. Uh, and it is now clear that they are isotropic and they satisfy all the axioms of the minor triple. So g tilde is equal to n, uh, b plus tilde plus b minus tilde. Uh, uh, and and they, are, uh, they are isotropic with respect to this invariant form. And so this gives rise to a Lie algebra structure. on B plus tilde, and also on G tilde, which is the, the double of B plus tilde. And uh, mm, we can descend it to, uh, we can mod out by, uh, by H, uh, because uh, uh, the co-bracket vanishes on H. Uh, so we can uh, take a quotient, and uh, so G plus H maps to G, and get a quasi-triangular structure. on G, uh, and this structure is given uh, by the formula uh, R equals to uh, uh, the sum uh, one half, the sum over uh, Xi tensor Xi plus sum of uh, uh, E alpha tensored with F alpha uh, over positive roots, uh, and uh, Xi is an orthonormal basis of H. So then uh, this satisfies the quantum young, classical young Baxter equation, and this follows really from uh, the whole uh, story, so you don't really need to check it. And uh, uh, moreover, if you take r plus r uh, to 1, then this is uh, the sum xi xi plus sum of e alpha f alpha plus sum of f alpha e alpha, and that's exactly the Casimir. of G, which is simply the inverse of the uh, uh, bilinear form. This one? Yes, of course. It's a direct sum of two non-degenerate pairings. Right. It's not positive on the real part, but it's non-degenerate, yeah. OK, uh, so, uh, so this is the story with uh, these things. and. Uh, 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 there is a similar uh, story uh, for infinite dimensional Lie algebras. So, in, 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 in Break it. G 
plus G dual? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, well, uh, so y you can also uh, define Lie by algebra structure on G. So there is a Mannion triple where the uh, double is G plus G, and uh, the subalgebras are the B plus here and B minus here, roughly speaking, and B minus here and B plus here, but with some conditions on the Cartan. Yeah, so inverse construction is, uh, uh, mm, we start with the Lie by algebra, and, and then we construct G, which is G plus plus G minus, and this will be a Mannion triple. OK, so maybe we'll uh, j Right, so they inverse to each other. These constructions are inverse to each other. OK, so I, I want to say that similar things are true for katz moody algebras, but there you have to be a bit careful uh, because uh, you have to take graded duals, but need graded duals. And uh, R is an infinite sum. And uh, so, uh, but the co-bracket is going to be given by formulas like this. Delta of EI is uh, DI, EI wedge HI, and delta of FI is also FI, DI, FI wedge HI, where DI are the symmetrizing uh, numbers for the Cartan matrix, and delta of uh, HI is zero. So, uh, Uh, so let me consider uh, uh, an example. Which is important, and which is the Lie by algebra, which is the quasi-classical limit of the Yangian. So Yangian Lie by algebra. So this is an example. So we take the following Mannion triple. So, so we fix uh, G bar, which is a finite dimensional uh, simple Lie algebra. And then we take G. Larger letters, OK. And then we define G is going to be Laurent series over G bar. And G plus is going to be. Uh, Uh, the series which do not have non-negative terms. So this is uh, polynomials of T inverse uh, with uh, zero constant terms. And G minus is uh, the complement of that, which is a uh, Taylor series. Uh, and then uh, uh, you have a form, uh, which is F with G, which is just the residue uh, of the one form uh, F inner product with DG, where the inner product uh, is uh, uh, yeah, yes, G bar, thank you. So, so we take F and uh, multiply it by DG using the form uh, on G bar, we get a scalar one form and then we take its residue, which means coefficient of T inverse. Uh, and uh, so this form is invariant. Uh, and uh, uh, it is easy to see that the conditions for Mannion triple are met. 
So this is an infinite dimensional Mannion triple. And what is useful here and important is that G minus is uh, identified uh, with the full dual of G plus. So we do not need to take restricted dual. So this form identifies G minus with the full dual of G plus. And so in this situation, we still get a Lie by algebra structure on G plus. So Lie by algebra structure on G plus and uh, also on the double, which is G. And, uh, uh, and we get the R matrix, but the R matrix will be infinite. So it's an infinite uh, sum. It lies in some completion. So what does R matrix is going to look like? What is it going to look like? Well, let's choose a basis. So basis of G, uh, uh, let us call it AI, G bar. And, and then we also choose basis of, uh, well, we have dual basis, AI dual. And then uh, R is going to be the following thing. So we have to sum over uh, things like this. So this is the summation over I and over n. And here is going to go ai. And n is greater or equal to 1. So we divide ai by t to the n. Uh, well, uh, if maybe I should write ai times t to the minus n. And you tensor that with ai dual times t to the uh, n minus 1. So these bases are dual. Uh, th this is a basis of G plus, uh, and this is a dual basis, topological dual basis of G minus. Uh, but maybe I should use uh, another variable here, because uh, this uh, T lies in the first component, this T lies in the second component, so let me use U here. And then uh, note that you could, uh, so, so this is, uh, so if I write that Casimir, which is the sum of AI tensored with AI star, then you can write this uh, as uh, 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 so if you sum t to the minus n times u to the n minus 1, so what do you get? So you get uh, 1 over t plus u over t squared plus u squared over t cubed plus so on. So this is equal to 1 over t times 1 over 1 minus u over t. And uh, this is uh, 1 over t minus u. So what I get altogether is... Let me call this omega, this, uh, this Casimir, because I use t for the variable. So this is going to be omega divided by t minus u. So this is kind of schematic way of writing this R matrix as a function of two variables. And then uh, what you can see is that uh, how to write down the quantum Young-Boxer equation, the classical Young-Boxer equation for this thing. Uh, So we, we, we had this infinite sum, and we made sense of it by, uh, by summing this series to a rational function. And so we can think of it, uh, so we have this function r of s, or r of z, which is, well, let me write here. Uh, so r of z equals to omega divided by z. And then uh, we've got uh, uh, the cl classical Young-Baxter equation looks like this. R12 of Z1 minus Z2 commutator with R13 of Z1 minus Z3 with uh, plus Oh, I'm sorry. A residue of f with, uh, with uh, g, g times dt. I, I'm sorry. This is a mistake. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, so uh, r12 of z1 minus z2 with r23 of z1 2 minus z3. 
plus r13 of z1 minus z3 with r23 of z2 minus z3 equals to 0, which can be understood as an identity between rational functions. And so this is called the classical Young-Baxter equation. with spectral parameter. And it is, uh, the f in physics, this is how it appears. Appears with the spectral parameter. So Drinfeld called this a pseudo-triangular structure. Uh, because uh, it, it's not an, uh, a really a quasi-triangle structure. This tensor is an infinite sum. Uh, it lies in some completion. And this uh, reflects itself in the fact that this function has a pole. And so uh, that's why it's not a quasi-triangular structure, but it's a pseudo-quasi-triangular structure. But that word was too long, so he called it a pseudo-triangular structure. So. Uh, but also, it's, uh, it's, uh, the, wh why is quasi missing here? Well, it behaves like triangular structure, because if we take R12, uh, R plus R12, so, uh, so R plus R12, which means we write R of uh, Z plus R12, but then it needs to be a minus Z, because T and U get switched. Well, this is equal to omega over Z plus omega over minus Z, which is 0. So it looks like, so it, looks like triangular structure. Which means symmetric tensor category uh, corresponds to classical limit of symmetric tensor category. But it's uh, um, actually, this is cheating. Uh, because uh, uh, what you get is, uh, so 1 over t minus u is equal to uh, 1 over t uh, plus uh, u over t squared plus u squared over t cubed plus so on. And uh, m 1 over u minus t, we expand in the different way. So uh, it's expanded as u uh, plus uh, 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 what is it? 1 over u plus t over u squared plus uh, uh, plus so on, and so uh, uh, so what uh, uh, what you get uh, is a sum. So so you get uh, one over t minus u plus one over u minus t, and this is the sum of uh, over a all n and z of t to the n divided by u to the n plus one, a and this is of course uh, physicists know that this is not really zero. This is delta function of u minus t. Because you have expanded these things in different regions. So this is a, a, a heuristic uh, comment. Uh, you can make all of this precise uh, in the setting of, let's say, uh, vertex operators and so on. But uh, it, it's, uh, it says that uh, it's only, uh, it only seems that this is really zero. It is no, not, uh, I mean, it's, it only seems that this uh, structure is triangular, uh, skew-symmetric. It's only pseudo-triangular. So in fact, uh, uh, usual quantum, uh, so quantum and affine algebra also has such structure. And usual quantum group can be obtained as a limit. So it is not, it contains all the, inf it remembers about uh, things which are truly braided. But on, on superficially, it looks like a symmetric structure. So it's a really kind of uh, very interesting and curious phenomenon that, that happens here. Yeah, could, had a question? Uh, what? Uh, so where, last line? 1 over t minus u plus 1 over u minus t. So what is wrong with this? Huh? Yes. So, so uh, for example, you can see in, uh, let's say, in g cubed, 
tensor product with, uh, let's say, uh, in this case, C of what, Z1, Z2, Z3. But more generally, you should take meromorphic functions because there are also trigonometric and elliptic solutions of this equation. No, no, it's a field, field of rational functions. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, uh, so this is uh, the classical uh, uh, R matrix that corresponds to Young Yats. So now I want to uh, talk about representations. Uh, so let me talk about representations. Essentially, yes. So for uh, affine, this is an affine Katz-Moody algebra, well, without central extension. And uh, indeed, uh, classical Young-Baxter equation for this algebra can be interpreted as classical Young-Baxter equation for uh, the usual finite dimensional algebras, but with spectral parameter. Well, uh, because, uh, but, but there will be these poles which reflect the fact that we don't actually have uh, a true quasi-triangular uh, structure. Uh, uh, we, we do have a braided, so the point is this has to do with so uh, finite dimensional representations of a finely uh, Lie algebra, their quantizations. So category O representations form a braided category because our matrix becomes finite. But finite dimensional representations do, are not nearly important with respect to EI, and, and so they, uh, our matrix is an infinite series, and, and so you have to make sense of that, and that's what happens. We'll talk about that later today, and, uh, more tomorrow. That's right, it does, yeah. Well, yeah, so Youngians, uh, so when you quantize, you obtain Youngian, and so Youngian depends, uh, so, so uh, this, uh, it kind of uh, uses the additive structure of, uh, of, the, uh, of the line. So the, mm, you, the structure of one-dimensional algebraic group. So, uh, so we really have to choose some coordinate. Uh, or in, you know, in the language of Costello, for example, who uh, studied uh, Youngians appearing from four-dimensional gauge theories, uh, what you need to fix is a non-vanishing one form on your curve which is really DT in this case. Uh, so, uh, so representation theory. I already mentioned it uh, several times. So let's start with UQ of uh, G, where G is uh, Katz Moody. For example, finite dimensional or affine. And let me consider Q generic. So Q not a root of unity. Well, uh, then first of all, uh, we have uh, 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 integrable representations. So let's remember what happens for the usual G. For usual G, we have integral representations. Uh, and these are... Uh, uh, representations that are, uh, let's say, integrable uh, uh, representations. So may maybe, uh, say, category, what is category O? So there is category O. And these are, roughly speaking, represent there are several ways to define it. You can get slightly different categories, but you can say, that uh, uh, Cartan diagonalizable uh, and uh, EI nil, uh, locally nil potent. representations. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, 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 very integrable representations. 
which is denoted by O int, it's a subcategory of O. Uh, and uh, so M, uh, well, V is O int if uh, uh, V is locally finite uh, with respect to each SL2 uh, subgroup. Uh, uh, with respect, remember the Katz Moody algebra is generated by a bunch of SL2s, and so this is with respect uh, each SL2 uh, subalgebra. Uh, generated by E i, F i, or and H i. And uh, the standard theorem from Katz's book is that uh, uh, this category O int is uh, semi-simple and uh, simple objects are L lambda where lambda lies in dominant integral weight and uh, the character of a lambda is given by the vile Katz character formula, which involves, which is the same as vile character formula, but generalized to a finely algebra. Uh, and uh, the theorem also holds for quantum groups. So there is a theorem. Yeah, yeah. So, so when you define Katz Moody algebra, you will get automatically a central extension because the sum. Right, because essentially the sum of HIs with some coefficients is a central element. But also you have to add there, in order to make the theory work well, you need to add a derivation which measures the degree for a fine algebra. And in general, for any Katz-Moody algebra which has degenerate Cartan matrix, you have to add some elements to compensate for that. But that's a minor technical point. And uh, this is a theorem, I guess, due to Lustig which says that this also holds uh, uh, in the quantum case. Uh, so this uh, means that uh, when you deform uh, Q, the representation uh, d flatly deformed. They don't get bigger. Uh, and uh, so this is very nice. Uh, but this doesn't, so the category as an abelian category, it is uh, the same, but as a tensor category, uh, it, it is not so. So, uh, so in fact, the theorem that if you take representations finite dimensional of UQ of G as a tensor category, uh, it determines Q up to Q goes to Q inverse. And if you review it as a braided tensor category, then even uh, you can uh, tell Q from Q inverse because eigenvalues of the square braiding will be powers of this Q. So this shows the subtlety of the notion of uh, 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 monoidal category because monoidal category is not just, of course, if you tensor two representations and decompose, you will get the same multiplicity. You will not see Q. But Q is seen if you're trying to write the associativity maps. Even though the associativity maps appear to be the identity because these are strict categories. But nevertheless, if you try to identify them, construct a, a fiber functor, it doesn't work. Construct a, fi a tensor functor, it doesn't really work. So, uh, uh, so, so they are really different. Yeah, if you include the braiding. Uh, no. uh, so, uh, and uh, it's more interesting to see what happens in category O. Oh, this is bad. Maybe I'll write. This. So, category O. Uh, so, so there you have Verma modules, as usual, M lambda, and, uh, finite, uh, uh, and then we have uh, simple modules, where lambda is not necessarily in P plus, an arbitrary weight, and so there is a, uh, so L lambda is a quotient of M lambda by the maximal uh, proper submodule, uh, and uh, 
And uh, um, so, uh, so there is a theorem. This is already not semi-simple, and characters of L lambda are much more difficult to compute. They are computed using uh, kashdan lustig polynomials. This is a theorem for finite dimensional Lie algebras. Uh, uh, it was proved by Bellinson and Bernstein and by uh, Brilinski Kashivara for infinite dimensional case by Kashivara Tanisaki. Uh, but uh, uh, it turns out that in the quantum case, the characters are the same. So for generic Q, the character of L lambda Q is the same as the character of L lambda. And this is uh, proved in our paper with Kashdan. So this uses, uh, this is uh, uh, use much less elementary than this. It, it uses uh, qu the theory of quantizations of Lie by algebra. So basically the idea is that we construct uh, uh, our quantization of Lie by algebra using our quantization functor. Then uh, mm, by construction, this is true for that quantization. And then we prove that our quantization, which is defined implicitly using Driffin associator, is isomorphic to the explicit quantization of Drinfeld and Jimbo that we discussed here. And uh, you prove that basically by showing that it couldn't be otherwise, that there is too little freedom uh, and everything is basically determined. Uh, and finally, I want to discuss finite dimensional representations. All right, so, so several minutes discuss finite dimensional representations of affine uh, algebras. So this is uh, what will lead us to the topic I ultimately want to discuss, which is Youngians and quantum affine algebras. So uh, in the affine case, besides uh, these categories, we also have a very interesting category of finite dimensional representations, which is related to all kinds of things in mathematical physics and uh, in math itself. So finite dimensional representations of uh, UQ of G hat, where G hat is an affine Lie algebra. So this means, uh, this corresponds to an affine Cartan matrix. Uh, I probably don't have time, much time to talk about uh, basic theory of affine Lie algebra, but affine Lie algebra, the, the, the beauty of affine Lie algebras is that they have two realizations. One through uh, katz moody generators, EI, FI, and HI, and the other through loop realization. So this is equal to G of T, T inverse, plus C times uh, central element C. And there is a central extension, and now the formula that I wrote before, which was wrong for that purpose, is going to be correct. So uh, commutator of A of T with B of T for two uh, Laurent polynomials is a uh, residue of uh, DA with B. Uh, well, it's uh, the commutator point-wise A, B of T plus the resi uh, plus, uh, residue of uh, DA with B times C. Uh, and uh, of course, all the discussion in Braverman's lectures and Bezrukovnikov's lectures so involved loop groups whose Lie algebra is this Lie algebra. So representation theory of this Lie algebra is extremely important. And um, so, uh, well, of course, this Lie algebra has category O with all the nice properties, uh, but also it has category of finite dimensional representations, which at first sight is a little bit boring, although under closer consideration, it is not so boring. It's quite interesting. But when we quantize that category, that category will change. The characters will change. And uh, it will become even more interesting. So, so, what, uh, so let's consider finite dimensional representations of this uh, Lie algebra G uh, And let's look at the, uh, so, so the first uh, fact is that uh, uh, C always acts by zero. So you can show that any finite dimensional representation uh, um, has a, uh, so C has to act by zero. And the, the reason is the following, that for irreducible representation, uh, uh, this is, uh, 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 so, so there is a, uh, uh, 
so so there is, there are these elements like let's say let's say for SL2 so there is an element h times t and commutator with h times t inverse is going to be 2c and c is central so this is a three dimensional heisenberg algebra and heisenberg algebra uh, cannot have uh, finite dimensional representations in which c has a uh, uh, non zero eigenvalue so any finite dimensional representation of the heisenberg algebra C has to be nilpotent. But also, we have these SL2 subalgebras. Uh, finite dimensional representation of SL2 uh, have the property that the corresponding elements HI are semi simple. And C is a sum of some coefficients CI times HI, so also has to be semi simple. So it has to be both semi simple and nilpotent which means that it is zero. So that already makes it a little bit boring because all the interesting stuff we, it, you know, we might think all the interesting stuff comes from non-zero values of C. Uh, and also uh, the irreducible representations look in a pretty boring way. Uh, namely, uh, there is a theorem which is not that hard to prove. Maybe it's a kind of extended exercise which says the following, that uh, so we have evaluation homomorphism, phi, which goes from g hat to g, and which evaluates, well, we know already that c is killed, so it evaluates every a of uh, t just to a of 1. Uh, and more generally, you can define, if you have a uh, number z in c star, then you can define evaluation homomorphism phi z, which will evaluate a at the point z. And therefore, uh, if you have a finite dimensional, so if V is a uh, representation of G, then there is a pullback phi Z upper star of V, which is V of Z, which is called evaluation representation. So we simply take our V, we take our uh, Laurent polynomial A, we evaluate it at uh, uh, point Z, and we act by the obtained element of uh, G on the vector space. And then the theorem is that, the tensor, that um, we, we can tensor such representations. And if we tensor them at different points, uh, and they were irreducible, we will always get an irreducible representation. So, uh, so here is the theorem. Uh, so first statement is the following. If V1, Vn, irreps of G, let's say G is simple, and Z1, Zn, and C star are distinct, uh, then the tensor product V1 of Z1, Vn uh, of Zn, is irreducible. And second, any irreducible representation, finite dimensional representation, uh, uh, has this form in a unique way, up to permutation. By the way, when I talk about finite dimensional representation, I do not add these derivations that I mentioned before, because then finite dimensional representations will not exist. So this shows that the representation theory uh, is a little bit boring, uh, although this is, it's boring only if we consider uh, finite dimensional, uh, well, m maybe I should say uh, non-trivial. Because if you have a, a trivial irreducible representation, then, uh, of course, it doesn't depend on the z, and we can tensor with any number of them, and that won't change anything. What if we tensor with the z? If we tensor with the same z, then it will become reducible. So, so there is a lemma, actually, uh, uh, which, uh, which uh, you should do. It's a very nice exercise. Uh, let v and w be non-trivial irreducible representations 
This is an uh, exercise on f uh, representation theory of simple finite dimensional Lie algebra. Mm -hmm. You have two non-trivial reducible representations, uh, uh, then the tensor product is reducible. That's an exercise. There is a one, uh, actually, actually there is a one line proof of this. So, uh, and therefore if you say do something like V of Z times W of Z, well this is of course the same as V cross W of Z, and this will already be reducible. So you cannot tensor at the same point to uh, keep the irreducibility. And uh, well, uh, turns out that to see uh, the you know, interesting aspects of this category, you need to consider non-irreducible uh, representations, reducible representations. So then the structure of basically category of coherent sheaves on the line interacts with the category of representations of G in an interesting way. And so you get some interesting theory. No, if you tensor at different points, if you tensor at different, you see this affine Lie algebra is huge. And so if you tensor at different points, essentially what happens is you, when you evaluate, you get two separate copies of G at those two points, which don't talk to each other. And, and uh, so basically you are considering the tensor product as a module over the direct sum of two copies of G, and then it is irreducible. Uh, right. Okay, and then, uh, uh, so uh, uh, perhaps I should, uh, I should stop here, but what will we do tomorrow? We will discuss what happens when we do the same thing for quantum affine algebra. There is also evaluation homomorphism, but only for SLN. Uh, and uh, you can uh, construct representations in this way. But the category is much more interesting. And uh, then uh, uh, also we will discover that uh, in order to do this efficiently, uh, we really need to uh, have uh, a loop realization of the quantum affine algebra. Uh, which is uh, analogous to this realization of classical affine algebra. But that realization is much more subtle. And, uh, uh, and then we will talk about the notion of Q character uh, of a representation, which really describes the growth and decreeing of that category. OK, any questions? Oh, yeah, you can also consider higher dimensional. So this, uh, for the classical uh, case, you, uh, I mean, we're considering here uh, functions on G, uh, with, with G-valued functions on C star, but we could take actually any algebraic variety. And we can consider uh, representations of functions on G, uh, let's say in the plane, uh, uh, functions, uh, let's polynomials uh, of two variables, or three variables, or whatever you want. And, th and that's actually also interesting. Uh, re reducible representations still will look boring like that, but uh, mm, uh, non, uh, but reducible, but in decomposable representations will be interesting. In particular, you have some interesting modules called vile modules, uh, and uh, those are interesting. So mm, there are a lot of papers about that. Th that's right. Yeah. No, when you quantize this thing, it becomes also more interesting. Yes. No, you can only, quantization only works for low dimensional varieties. So you can quantize for one dimensional and for two dimensional. Yes, Jordi. <laughs> ah, okay. So, uh, home, V cross W, V cross W equals home, V cross V dual, W cross W dual. And this contains a C and a G, because V is non-trivial. This also contains a C and a G. <laughs> OK, other questions? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so if you have Laurent series, uh, then uh, mm, 
Well, I mean, then you can evaluate uh, at uh, generic point of the punctured disk. So <laughs> the represent you can still have finite dimensional representations, but not over C, but over this field, so to speak. Well, so they will be infinite dimensional, but they will be finite dimensional over this field, which will be, they will commute with everything. Yes. I did not define Young again. We will define it tomorrow, yes. No, it's a double Young again. So the, it's a quantum. So Young again will quantize the half, which is this uh, uh, negative polynomials. And then, uh, or sorry, what will actually it quantizes the other half, it's called the, the positive part. So uh, the dual Youngian quantizes the negative half, and double Youngian quantizes the whole thing. So uh, and the Youngians are limits of quantum affine algebra. So uh, you can degenerate. You, you see, you can degenerate C star. You can degenerate it to C. So you see, if you have C star, which is a punctured plane, there is a point one. And if you look at a very small neighborhood of this point, you do not see the point zero. And it looks like uh, the uh, l like C. So so this means that you can degenerate uh, C star into C. And when you do so, uh, this uh, quantum group corresponding to this uh, algebra U Q of G hat degenerates into the Youngian or into the double Youngian, depends on how you do it. And uh, uh, so Youngian is really a kind of limiting case of this theory. But this limit is subtle, and uh, it, it's worth talking about what happens in this limit. So other questions? Yeah, and here it's up to permutation. Up to perm. Ah, yeah, of course. You can uh, definitely, these z's could be varied and representations change. So uh, here there is no R matrix because we are doing classical Lie algebra. But uh, when we quantize, what will happen is that there will be R matrices, but they will depend on spectral parameters and have poles. And these poles will be very interesting. They will occur exactly at the points when tensor products are reducible. So the tensor products are going to be reducible not when the points coincide, but with the, when the points are at a certain fixed distance from each other, which depends on the representation. And that's going to be much more interesting. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is a, uh, th there will be this, our matrices with poles. And uh, so, uh, well, it's also called pseudo triangular, but actually it's, uh, there is a notion of meromorphic, uh, braided tensor category. So it's not a braided tensor category, not a symmetric tensor category. It is some kind of weird mix of the two, uh, uh, which arises in this affine theory. And uh, this was defined by Soibelman uh, uh, and Kajdan, and uh, mm, then uh, basically uh, studied uh, in a lot of papers. And uh, from the point of view of category theory, this is not very well understood, what kind of structure this really is. Other questions? So, so this, what happens, it, it has to do, uh, so usual quantum groups, uh, they have to do with uh, factorization algebras. Uh, but infinite dimensional, they are fine, they have to do with factorization categories, which are higher level. Uh, so this is what Castelli explains in his book, basically. And, uh, Yeah, yeah, something like that. But the problem is that he considers a formal version of this. So I will explain uh, what for, uh, formal version means. It means that shifts uh, in the Youngian or the Q is a formal variable. Q is exponential of H bar. And then you don't see, there, uh, when you look at the irreducible representations, you don't really see 
the whole structure. So, so in some sense, you lose something. <laughs> okay, other questions? Okay, so we'll continue tomorrow. <laughs>